The Sunday TV Mass is brought to you by the Catholic Diocese of Sioux Falls with support from the Catholic Diocese of Rapid City, the Catholic Family Sharing Appeal, the generosity of viewers like you, and from a grant from the Catholic Community Foundation for Eastern South Dakota, which raises, manages, and distributes God's gifts to donor-directed ministries. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, when Jesus returned after the resurrection, as we will hear in the gospel today, he would say, peace be with you. His desire is to bring godly peace to each one of us, and all we need to do is open our hearts to receive that grace. And how important it is as we open our hearts that we acknowledge our sins, so let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. 
Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. 
In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the whole, the world, is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. And by water alone, not by water alone, but by water and blood, the Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. 
Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. What will it take for any of us to believe without doubt all that God has revealed in scripture and tradition? For most of us, it's a journey of growing in faith. Doubt is a very common spiritual struggle. And part of the reason that spiritual struggle is there is because in our human experience with other people, we might have reasons to doubt what they're saying is true. If I use the example of social media today, there's so many things in the world today that it's hard to know what's true. And so it fosters the spirit of doubt. Now we need to be very judicious and not believe everything that we see on media. Not every human being is gonna speak perfectly and authentically all the time. And so it creates this sense of unrest, uncertainty, Can I believe? As human beings, because of our human frailty, of course, there will be weakness. There will be times of failure. And when those times happen, it's so important that we turn to the Lord and ask for the grace to be filled with all that is good, true, and beautiful. It's also a challenge for us as human beings to spiritually have faith at certain times. For example, we're going through some difficult trial in our life and we may doubt that God is present, that he's blessing us because he's not answering our prayer, for example. So we can have a spiritual weakness, a vulnerability in the area of not believing all that God has revealed. And when those times come, it's so important for us to ask God for the grace that we need so that we may believe without needing to see. Of course, the gospel today teaches us that profound example of what we commonly know of as doubting Thomas. Thomas is doubting that Jesus could have risen from the dead. And yet, Jesus had appeared several times and different people came. I have seen the Lord. And they were trustworthy people. But Thomas, in his obstinance of wanting evidence, was not willing to just have an open heart and to trust and receive that gift of faith initially. And God, in his great mercy, of course, provides him that opportunity by coming right into his life and say, okay, Thomas, here you go. Put your fingers into my hand, your hand into my side. and Be not unbelieving, but believe. Thomas, in his humility, then, of course, acknowledges that he was wrong. And it's so important for us when we have failed in the areas of faith to just turn to the Lord and ask for mercy. This weekend, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. Sometimes, as human beings, we have difficulty believing that God could forgive us of our sins. 
whether we could ever forgive ourselves and be free from that burden. But it's true. God forgives sin. And he wants to free all of us from the burdens that we might carry in our mind, from things that we have done that we should not have done, or things we ought to have done that we did not do. In this month of April, we also remember in a very particular way that it is Child Abuse Prevention Month. And it's good for us to reflect upon how important it is for us to be attentive to children and to youth, to look for signs all the way from signs of neglect for a child, or whether it's verbal abuse, emotional abuse, spiritual abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, whatever form of abuse it might be, and you yourselves, some of us, may have experienced that in our own lives. It causes so much hardship so much suffering. And so what the Lord wants us to do is to run to him, to seek out his love and his mercy, to be attentive to ways that we can really protect the children of the world today because they need to be protected, especially from the things in society which are bombarding them, tempting them to do things that are not of God, even to others. My brothers and sisters, Divine Mercy Sunday is all about receiving grace from God, to trust him. St. Faustina is such a beautiful example. Jesus, I trust in you. When we doubt, make that act of faith. When we struggle, ask God for the gift of faith so that the faith of God can enter into our hearts, that we will not be unbelieving, but believe. My brothers and sisters, any of us who have had an experience of the presence of God in our life and know him to be true, we know there's ups and downs with life, and it's not that we're always up in the mountain on Tabor where everything is great. Life's filled with a lot of trials and difficulties and sufferings. But if we lean into our relationship with God, we have the grace and strength we need to rise above the uncertainties of this world, even when we can't trust other human beings. We can always and ought always to trust that God is always faithful, a loving, merciful Father who wants to help us, raise, above us, raise us above our human weakness, and fill us with his life and love. As we remember the children of the world, let us be attentive, especially those who've been offended in some way by others. Let us pray for protection. Let us be diligent in our actions. Let us help protect what God is intended to be that all the children throughout the world could grow up in a safe environment, an environment where they can trust those who are around them. But we must be very diligent because most abuse happens with those who know them most or have the most exposure to them. My brothers and sisters, the Word of God encourages us to be communities of believers of one mind, one heart. The second reading captures it so beauty, beautifully. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Faith. And of course, the gospel. Peace be with you. God so wants to bring peace to the world, and all we need to do is open our hearts and believe what he has revealed to us. Allow our lives to be transformed by that grace and then to become ambassadors of all that is good, true, and beautiful in the world, and especially to help our young people on the way to heaven.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on a Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we acknowledge God's merciful love for us and our great need for his mercy, we now place before him these prayers petition. For the church, that her members will be living proof of God, Christ's abundant mercy throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that an outpouring of divine mercy from the heart of Jesus will awaken public servants and citizens to work for the moral good of society and the sanctity of human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the victims of abuse of any kind at the hands of the church, or school systems, or youth organizations, or governmental ent entities, or within families, that there will be repentance on the part of the offenders and restoration of peaceful security for victims. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who provide help for the abused, counselors, therapists, and advocates, that they may act with the wisdom and compassion of the divine mercy Jesus in their healing ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have suffered from tragedies, setbacks, or loss of loved ones, that they may find comfort in the divine mercy flowing from the heart of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in need of healing of any kind, that the healing power of the risen Jesus will restore them to the fullness of physical, spiritual, or emotional health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we will be a people whose Easter joy is cherished, nurtured, and shared with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your gracious love, you know our need before we even ask. In a special way, we ask your grace and blessing upon any and all survivors of child abuse, that they may be blessed, that they might know of your love. Give them hope, Lord. Surround them with others who will help them on their journey to reflect back to the true dignity they have that you gave them that they might discover and experience it in a deepening way. We ask that you hear and grant all of our prayers according to your holy will and help us to show mercy to one another as you've been so merciful to us. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Thomas, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine, by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.